Let's discuss some short game basics. The short game is so important because it happens on almost every hole. There'll be holes where you're able to hit a clean driver, hit a good iron shot. You're by the green in two shots, and then you'll find that it might take you three or four shots to get on the green, even though you're really close by. And so I want to help you avoid that by giving you some sound fundamentals for your short shots. Let's start off with the stance. I'm going to use a stick on the ground to represent where the ball would be. With the short game stance, we're going to want our feet close together. If I was hitting a ball in front of this orange stick, my feet would be close together. I would have more weight on my front foot. And so my sternum or the button on my shirt, I actually want that to be out in front of the golf ball. We would use, and we'll talk about the different clubs that we'll use with, sh with short shots, but we'll start off with the sand wedge. And when we grab that sand wedge, we actually want to grip down a little bit, about an inch to two inches where our hands are getting closer to the steel. The reason why we grip down on the club is because it gives us more control over the club head. When we're standing to the chip shot, we also want to lean the shaft ever so slightly forward. The reason why we have the shaft leaning forward, our weight on our front foot, is because it promotes hitting down on the ball. What that means is that the club head is actually descending into the ground. When we do that, we'll start to actually hear a brushing sound when we're making our practice swings. So when we're hitting our chip shots, I'm going to hit some now towards this putting green. We want to have a routine where we do some chip shots or practice strokes, and we want to make it pendulum-like. So however far we swing back, we want to go through that same amount. I am starting off with a sand wedge right here, and you'll notice when I hit this chip shot, the ball will pop up in the air, and then once it lands on the green, it stops. It's very use this is a very useful shot. We could also take a club that has less loft on it, one of our longer clubs, and I'll show you how the ball reacts. This one right here is a pitching wedge. I'm gonna do the same style stroke, and when I'm doing these chip shots, there's, there's not a lot going on with my hands, so as I'm making my swing, there is a little bit of wrist hinge going back, but as I follow through, my wrists are solid and the club's pointed towards, towards my body. We, we definitely want to avoid having any kind of flip or breakdown. That is the number one thing that causes people inconsistency with their short games. When we break down our wrists like this, we actually have the end of the club start to move up. And instead of hitting down on it and brushing the grass, we'll miss the grass, we'll top the ball, the ball will go low and it'll roll over the green. Going back to this pitching wedge, I'm going to do the same shot. The ball, it goes lower, and then you're actually going to see that it rolls out even farther. Go in the hole. I'm going to show you one other club. This is an eight iron, even longer. Same idea, same stroke here. You're going to notice that it goes even lower and that it rolls out more. Okay. So, and then you'll see it roll too far past the hole. So, there's not a right or wrong with what club to use. We just have to make sure that where we land the ball is appropriate with the club that we have in our hand. So if I have a sand wedge which makes the ball go up high and it doesn't roll, I'll want to land that ball closer to the hole. If I have that pitching wedge where it's kind of right in between where it rolls as much as it flies in the air, then that, that's totally fine. And sometimes I might be really far away, lots of green to, to use. I can make a short uh, chip, mo chip motion with my, with my eight iron. Other things that give people trouble with chipping, uh, what they'll do, sometimes players will have their weight on their back foot. Whenever you have the weight on the back foot, again, it promotes hitting up on the ball, and that's not what we want. So resist the urge to use any kind of wrists uh, in your follow through. See if you can make your chip shot, hold the finish. And then you know, do the routine where you do a couple practice strokes where you're hearing the ground, you're using your eyes where you want the ball to land. You want to paint a picture, you want to paint a movie in your mind of where you want the ball to land and how it's going to react. So I have a sand wedge right here and so I'm visualizing making a little bigger motion so that way this ball could land closer to the hole. 
and then we'll see the motion here. I'll do one more. And so we'll see that ball went up in the air, and then it landed and it stopped. And so uh, definitely use this routine when you're out there. Make sure you have the weight on the front foot. Make sure you're not using too much hands in the follow through. You'll be able to hit some clean chip shots. <laughs>